Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's Chickens here, back again another Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity video. And today's video, like I told you guys, is going to be a character guide video on the Goron Champion Daruk. As you may probably know from Breath of the Wild, his signature ability is Daruk's Protection, and he will use that ability in a lot of his combos, which makes him impervious to damage, which is pretty cool. But opening up the attack menu for Daruk, here are all of his combos and abilities. And throughout this video, we'll take a look at each one of these things and what exactly they do. And again, already 100% of the game, so these are indeed all of the attack combos and abilities with all of the upgrades. So if you're still early on in the game or just barely unlocked them, you probably won't have some of these, but you can always just check it out anyways, or just come back to the video later whenever you do unlock them. But before I get started, please make sure you guys subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these character guides. I'll be making one for each character in this game. So make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss any of those, but now let's we'll get this video started by taking a look at some of his basic abilities. Daruk's first basic ability is a dash attack where he does a Goron roll surrounded by a signature protection ability. This is activated by pressing X and then holding it, and depending on how long you hold the X for, the protection bubble around Daruk will grow up to two times. And the bigger it is, it will dish out a little bit more damage as well as have a greater area effect and last a little bit longer. Next up is another dash attack, and this one is a lot weaker and is performed by sprinting and pressing X. This will make Daruk do a jump while he's rolling and slam back to the ground, damaging nearby enemies. Daruk's unique action, which is triggered by pressing ZR, is to explode any summoned magma blocks on the field. At the end of some of his combos, Daruk will either spawn magma pillars or ramps, which you can then explode, causing damage nearby enemies by pressing ZR. The magma pillars can be activated up to two times depending on how big the pillar is. If it is the smaller variant, the first ZR press will make it grow into a normal magma pillar, and then you can press ZR again to make it explode. And finally, if there's nothing on the field, Daruk will just do his animation and nothing will actually happen. And then here are a few of his weak point smash animations. Unlike Raposo, these really don't do anything special outside of the damage they do to bosses. And finally wrapping the section off with his special attack, this one's pretty basic, it's just another huge damage, huge AoE attack where he summons some rocks to do damage to all enemies nearby. Now moving on to the super runes, as always we'll start with Cryonis. So Daruk's Cryonis is very similar to Link's as he will spawn a Cryonis block directly under him. Then once he's in the air, you have a chance to press X to do a falling attack, paraglide, or use a mid-air combo. If you choose the falling attack, Daruk will slam the ground with his boulder breaker and spawn three magma pillars in front of him. Daruk actually has a really good bomb room, so what he does is he throws first a huge bomb that splits into six smaller bombs off impact, and then once those explode, it will spawn six magma pillars wherever they fall at. And you just activate those pressing ZR to do a little bit extra damage. His Magnesis is pretty basic, so all he does is absorb all nearby metal weapons and then do this mid-air spin thing with them that damages nearby enemies. And finally for Stasis, all enemies will be frozen and Daruk will spawn a Magma Ball and punch it into them. And wherever this Magma Ball is punched to, a pillar will be spawned. However, this is one of the Stasis you can't press B to cancel out of, so there's no opportunity to stop the animation early and do extra damage after. Our first combo, like usual, is just going to be our 7 wise combo. For this combo, Daruk is going to do some basic strikes with his boulder breaker for the first 6 button presses, and on the last one he'll summon 3 magma bombs in front of him, and wherever they land, magma pillars will also spawn. To summon the magma bomb is at the end there, I think you might need to enhance his ability for that, but I'm not too sure because I really never found his enhance ability, so just let me know in the comments if you guys know or not. Yeah. 
Our second combo is the YX, where Daruk will do a normal attack, followed by a strong attack that will summon three magma pillars in a pretty close proximity to him. These magma pillars are always going to be the smaller kind and can be activated up to two times by pressing ZR. Combo number 3 is the YYXX combo, and for the first two Y presses, Daruk does some normal attacks again with his boulder breaker. The first X will do a spinning swing, and then shortly after that, you'll have the chance to follow that up with another X, where Daruk will slam his weapon into the ground and create a magma ramp. And like always, you can activate that magma ramp by pressing ZR, or you can choose the Goron roll off of that, and I'll show you to do that a little bit later in the quick tip section. Combo 4 is the 3 Y's and then an X, and for this one, Daruk will do 3 normal attacks, followed by a strong one, where he creates a magma pillar in front of him, and then throws a magma bomb at it. The magma pillar created here is destroyed by the magma bomb, so there's no opportunity to actually use his unique action here. Well, you could cancel out this animation early, right when the magma pillar spawns, but he won't throw the magma bomb, so there's really no point in actually doing that. Combo 5 is 4 Y's and an X, and this one is pretty similar to combo 3. For this one, Daruk will do 4 regular attacks, followed by a spinning jump attack, and when he lands, he'll slam his boulder breaker in the ground and create a magma ramp. Combo 6, as you probably all guessed, is 5 Y's and an X this time. Again, for all the Y presses, the root just does some normal attacks, and then we press X to summon a Magma Bomb Storm around him, as well as create 5 Magma Pillars in front of him. The 3 in the front will always be the bigger ones, while the 2 in the back are always going to be the smaller variant, and while that Magma Storm is going on, Daruk will be in protection, so he's actually impervious to taking any damage. And lastly, combo 7 is 6 Y's and an X, and like usual, just the same as combo 6, except with an extra regular attack. So now that we all know Zaruk's moveset, I'll move on to my short little quick tip section here. So as usual, I'll start off with the weapon builds I'm planning on using for him. So for Daruk, both of his hidden weapon seals kind of suck. He gets dash attack damage and heal by defeating enemies. And while dash attack may seem kind of good and heal by defeating enemies is kind of good, the weapon circle groups are in kind of suck if you want to build a good weapon for him. And if you want to get that plus 20 damage at the end, so... So I'm just not going to do that. My plan here is pretty simple, just to get all attack speed on him, just because I feel like he's kind of slow sometimes. So getting attack speed will help his moveset be a little bit faster so he can get all those combos off. I was thinking about adding an extra dash attack damage to make his Goron roll a little bit more powerful, but if you do that, it's going to mess up the weapon seal matches and you only get a plus 5 instead of a plus 15, like you would if you did all the 4 attack speeds. And also, there's also a character later you can unlock that's better at the dash attack than he is, so I feel like it's better just to go with all attack speed here. So now let's have some actual combat tips. The first one I kind of mentioned a little bit earlier, but if you create a magma ramp, you can actually go on roll on top of that. So after you create it, just hold X and then release it, and then after you go on roll off of that, he'll make another one after you slam his weapon back into the ground again. And you can actually chain this indefinitely as long as you have the space for it. So I usually use this when moving from outpost to outpost or trying to clear out long hallways or large groups of enemies in general. Another thing is to make sure you remember to detonate your magma pillars, because sometimes when you're button mashing, you can tend to forget about them, which I did a lot when I first started playing him. But if you learn all the combos and all the magma pillars that spawn at the end of them, it'll give you a better idea of how many ZR presses you need to do to finish off the combo. And these magma pillars sometimes, as you saw, can spawn pretty far away and do a lot of extra splash damage. So if you want to utilize Daruk the best, make sure to always detonate those magma pillars if you need to. And finally, for some combo tips, I found that combos 3 and 6 were the best for clearing outposts and crowd control while 4 and 5 were a little bit better at fighting bosses and taking out weak point gauges. But overall, I kinda hate to say it, but Daruk is pretty underwhelming as a character. It kinda sucks because Daruk is already one of the more overlooked champions, and with this game, he probably won't get that much use because his moveset really doesn't stand out that much. He isn't particularly amazing at any one thing like Rivali is at crowd control, or have any really cool and unique abilities like Rico does with your healing. And I think overall, her boss is just a better character and more fun to play as. But I do see some potential there as the magma pillars and magma ramps he creates can be pretty useful in some situations. 
So if you have fun playing as him, don't let my opinion stop you. This game isn't incredibly difficult, and once you get the hang of the game's mechanics, every character can do reasonably well. This could also just be a case of me not figuring out how to utilize him the best, but comparing his moveset to the other champions of the three main starting characters, I just find it very underwhelming and doesn't really stack up to all the other ones. But other than that guys, that's going to wrap up the video here. That is the entire moveset as well as all the abilities for the Goron Champion Daruk. And this wraps up our Champion Guide mini-series here. So next week I'll probably take a look at the original three characters. So just be on the lookout for that. But if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more Ancient Calamity content. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.